Do you have melasma or age spots that you have been trying every single product or treatment and it doesn't seem to work? or it seems to fade a little bit, but it keeps coming back. Well, today we're gonna to talk about the three truths about melasma to help you better understand what actually happens within your skin, the nature of hyperpigmentation, and what treatments or products that are best for you to help you treat hyperpigmentation. So this one is in particular melasma, and out of all the different types of hyper hyperpigmentation, melasma is actually the most stubborn to treat. Hi, my name is Christy, and I have been been treating clients with hyperpigmentation, acne, and other skin conditions for over 11 years. And today we're going to talk about the three truths about melasma. So hyperpigmentation is actually very common throughout the world, not just in the United States. And although it's a very common problem, it's actually very difficult to treat because every individual responds to uh, melanin production differently and uh, also the different factors that can be involved which includes of course genetics, sun exposure, age, hormones, prescription meds, and a whole other array of factors. So first, before we move on to explaining about um, hyperpigmentation, I do want to make sure we're all on the same page. So the first thing is melanocytes. Those are the cells that create the melanin. The second one is melanin, it's, off, it's the pigment that is found in animals and humans and it's basically, it causes color ranging from brown to black and it's in your hair, your skin, the iris of your eye. We're not going to go into the pigments of plants and all that other stuff, so that's, that's the melanin. And the benefits of melanin is it actually helps protect your skin from UV damage, it also protects it from burning um, and basically gives your skin color. And then the next one is melanosomes, and that's where melanin is produced, stored, and transported to the surface of the skin. The process of melanogenesis is often complex because it involves different hormones, enzymes, and proteins to make. And the reason why I'm explaining all this is so that you can better understand what treatments and what products to focus on best for you. And so we're going to talk about, um, for example, what who is more likely to uh, suffer from melasma. So in the U.S., 65% of those who did a survey, 65% uh, that were African American suffered with hyperpigmentation and they were more likely to seek treatment. Um, in another study, 35% of the people that suffered from melasma reported that they were of Hispanic and or Asian descent. And approximately 6 million women in the U.S. Uh, were reported to struggle with some form of hyperpigmentation. And although some men do struggle with hyperpigmentation, most of them are women, which explains that because most of melasma is hormonally driven, such as pregnancy, birth control, um, also, if you had a family member who suffered from melasma, then your chances go up. If you happen to be a Fitzpatrick uh, scale four, five, or six. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, then please click the link below in the description or above, and um, it actually will take you to a video that explains more about the Fitz, Fitzpatrick skin types. The second truth about melasma is that not only is um, it is a type of hyperpigmentation that is the most difficult to treat, because there's so many factors involved, it is not just one thing. So if you hear or um, any type of company says if you just use this one product or if you do this one treatment that your melasma will go away, this is false. Melasma needs to be treated. It is a multifaceted or multi-pronged approach in how you treat melasma. If you are finding this information helpful so far and you haven't subscribed, then please hit that subscribe uh, button and make sure you hit that notification to get notified of our next video, especially because we're going to be talking about specific products um, and specific ingredients to look out for in treating hyperpigmentation. Okay, so before we move on, I want to give a shout out to one of our binge watchers, Jennifer Hayes. Thank you so much for watching. And also an individual, uh, Jyoti Sharma. Hope I didn't uh, 
butcher your name. She watches all the way from Australia and she does have some hyperpigmentation and I've been doing an online consultation with her and she is a very good example of someone who is really trying to treat her skin but um, after she sent the pictures she's definitely oversensitizing her skin and inflaming her skin so we are going to try to treat that. So anyway thank you very much for watching. Okay so the other one is before we move on to treatments the other thing I most people don't really take into account is your lifestyle. Some of the things that you may be doing on a daily basis or weekly basis may be inflaming your skin and inflammation definitely triggers more hyperpigmentation or more melanocyte activity. Okay, so of course we talked about the hormone one. So if those of you who are taking birth control and you're starting to see some pigmentation formation, you may want to talk to your doctor about reducing the hormone levels or maybe using different hormone co combinations. Again, I'm not a doctor in regards to that. So please speak to them to see if there is some different dosage or different hormonal combinations that you can take to reduce the uh, pigmentation formation. So that's the first one. The second one is heat. Heat activates melanocyte activity, which then causes the formation of pigmentation. So if, um, if you're someone who's active and you're working out outside, um, see if you can do your running or walking and avoiding the hottest parts of the day. That's one. Two is, is that if you're someone who does hot yoga, this does not help your pigmentation. So avoid doing hot yoga and maybe doing yoga that is not in a hot uh, room. The other one is if, so I have a client, she's starting to form pigmentations on her jawline right, right here, um, and she has recently done a career change, um, and she is working over a hot stove. So see if you can put a hot fan, if that's realistic, to put a little small fan there to keep your skin cool and blow off the, the hot air from your face. So those are just some suggestions. So go through your, go through your lifestyle, your, your daily activities, your weekly activities, and see if there's anything that you can just slightly adjust to reduce the temperature of your skin that you may be doing on a daily and or weekly basis. Okay, so the next one is stress. And if you're thinking, well, you know that stress increases or can increase acne, it can also uh, increase the mel melanocyte activity. So stress hormones, including one called adrenocorticotropic hormones that can contribute to melanocyte activity or you know hyperpigmentation uh, so in addition to stress is of course sun exposure so sun exposure everyone talks about yes 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 sunscreen however there are sunscreens out there that actually is not just a sunscreen i like this one i, I talk about it over and over because it is a sunscreen it's a moisturizer it has anti-aging properties but it also has has lightening properties. So it has arbutin, which is a tyrosinase inhibitor. It helps with hyperpigmentation. It works really well if you layer your hyperpigmentation uh, fighting ingredients in there. Um, and it's 21% zinc oxide, and zinc oxide is a natural anti inflammatory. And so remember, inflammation can contribute towards hyperpigmentation. So that's why I like this one. Um, and then for those of you who are using a lot of acids, when you combine that with chemical sunscreens over time, this can inflame your skin. So the links and the description below is going to be in the description below. So if you want to find out more about that. Now, for those of you who have been trying to deal with your hyperpigmentation and you've tried different services and or products, you guys know that this is the truth about melasma. Melasma can be managed and it can be reduced, but it cannot be completely eradicated. Okay. Eventually, if you are not keeping up with it and you're getting sun exposure and not changing your lifestyle habits, eventually it can come back. I know, and this is why you're all frustrated. So the third truth about melasma is that it can be managed and it can be reduced uh, with combination of treatments and or products, um, but it cannot be completely eradicated. So here are your options, okay? So first of all, uh, professional treatments, the difference between using professional treatments um, and or at-home products is, is, is that products take longer and it's more costly. The professional treatments when used with products, so basically the products keep them at bay. The professional treatments are the fastest and the most effective way to get rid of it on the top layer of the skin. 
So that would be lasers and chemical peels. Now I'm not going to go into to the details of that right now, but lasers and chemical peels. And so when you go to them, they're going to recommend products that, and we'll go into it in our next video, on how you can keep them at bay. So those of you who've done treatments and thought that they were gone and you didn't use any products and you got frustrated because they started coming back, um, that's one of the reasons why. So this is why I'm explaining it, not just telling you, the, you know, you just have to use products. The other one is at-home treatments and then the other one um, that are tyrosinase inhibitors and skin lightening products. And then the last is anti-inflammatories because remember, inflammation can increase hyperpigmentation activity. So remember, we're going to go more into detail in our next video. So makeup is an art and skincare is a science. Thank you for watching.